So welcome everyone. We're so pleased to have an opportunity hosted by IFLA today to share with you our research on library associations and copyright education. And particularly want to thank Camille for her work in setting this up and being our technical support today. Thank all of you as well. If you were part of listening to us, make sure we had everything underway. Um, so I am Lisa Janicki Hinchliffe. I am the coordinator for information literacy services and instruction, as well as a professor in the university library at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I am also the former chair of the IFLA information literacy section, which is when I began, began this work to sort of look at how library associations, copyright literacy, copyright education could be furthered within the IFLA framework. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kaylin, and ask her to tell us a little bit about her work as well. Hi, I'm Kaylin Dwyer. So I'm the digital media specialist at the Institute for Digital Research in the Humanities at the University of Kansas, where I currently have the pleasure of supporting a number of digital storytelling initiatives at the University of Kansas and across the region. But prior to that, and my association with this project and with Lisa is that I recently graduated from the iSchool at the University of Illinois, and I was a student of Lisa. And uh, we worked on this project together with the other student on this slide, Jade Rose. Great, and Jade sends her regrets that she was not able to be with us today, but she too is employed, which as a professor makes me very, very happy. Um, and so she is actually conducting an information literacy session for some college students at this very moment. Um, I also want to thank Stephen Weiber, who has been a great partner and collaborator. Stephen is, of course, well known within IFLA as the policy and advocacy manager and really helped shape this project as well as um, give me guidance and support um, as we worked it through the IFLA structure. I wanna invite you to go ahead and enter any questions in the Q&A part of the Zoom system or to make uh, mentions within the chat uh, box as well. In fact, the chat box is a little bit easier in some ways because I can keep it open on the screen, but we'll go ahead and move through all of our slides and then when we get to the end of the formal presentation, we look forward to a dialogue with everyone about our findings. So the most um, fundamental premise of this work is that we believe, if we believe, <laughs> library associations believe that library associations can play a key role in both identifying priority areas for collective action, but then also providing professional development and support in order to catalyze and support libraries and library workers in taking action. So this is really like a fundamental, why do we have library associations at all? And then of course, IFLA has that special role of supporting other library associations. And this, this work on copyright literacy and copyright education goes back a number of years now. So it really started um, under the former um, strategic plan, which has of course been replaced by the updated IFLA strategy. But I think it's important to put this in context of where we started in the beginning. So where we started was this notion that we needed to advocate for an equitable copyright framework. And from that activity area derived a number of different activities over the year, including when we were at the World Library Congress, in Poland, we had a full day offsite sort of special track on copyright literacy and copyright education. There have been a number of other things, a special journal issue that came out and a number of other IFLA statements. One of the things that really came forward then as we look to the IFLA strategy for 2019, 2024, you see that IFLA really solidly articulates here its role related to key legal actions and key legal challenges that come up for libraries and how IFLA can be a, a force for good, if you will, or a catalyst for taking actions in these areas. And these areas of course include literacy, learning, access to knowledge, and that IFLA will do this by engaging with library workers, providing guidance and providing high quality advocacy materials. And you see some particular sub strategies listed here as well. So this project is really supporting 
the IFLA strategic plan, the IFLA strategy for what IFLA can do in the world to help library associations. Of course, we do have the, the formal IFLA statement on copyright education and copyright literacy, in which they define copyright literacy as having sufficient copyright knowledge to be able to take informed decisions on using copyrighted materials, understanding the structure, functioning, implications, laws. But of course, one of the things we have to say is, and how do people get this copyright literacy? Do they just develop it out of thin air? Are they born with it? No, they're not. Um, we need copyright education for that. Um, and so this question though, about whether there is adequate copyright education, if there's adequate support for developing copyright education for both library users, as well as library workers remained a question. But we see that within this IFLA statement, it laid out all these things that copy, like library associations should be doing relative to copyright literacy and copyright education. And so IFLA, Stephen, myself, having these conversations saying, okay, it's nice to say that library associations should do these things. We absolutely know those kinds of statements. But we also need to say, do they have the capacity to do these things? And if they do or do not, what additional supports would enable them to either build that capacity or build programs that um, take advantage of that capacity. So this project in particular sort of works with this particular theory of impact that IFLA supports library associations, library associations provide professional development support to library workers, and then library workers educate library users. So we have this sort of transition from IFLA providing support results in professional development. And when library workers have good knowledge and skills, they are able to support library users in developing copyright literacy through copyright advocacy, education, and assistance. So these are the questions then that drove us towards wanting to see some scholarly or research project in this area. We did not at that time when we started this project a couple years ago, have a good sense of how library associations support copyright literacy professional development for library workers. We also wanted to come to better understand how library associations can support copyright education professional development for library workers. So are they prepared to do copyright education work for library users. And then, of course, within the IFLA context, we're always asking, and what could IFLA do to be supportive of this? And in this case, we were particularly asking what they could do to support library associations. So way back then, and so summer 2018, we did a lot of investigations. We sort of came to this. Summer 2019, Jade Rose, the other uh, person who's on this presentation and a different library school student at Illinois, Allie Mendelson and I worked together on phase one of this project in which we did case studies, which then drove us to a global survey, which is what we'll talk about in detail here today that Kaylin worked on with me and Jade as well. And then we are now in phase three, disseminating the recommendations and trying to catalyze activity, which started this summer. So I do want to tell you a little bit about phase one, because phase one is what informed the development of the global survey that we're focused on here today. So in phase one, we realized that we wanted to make sure that our survey that we knew we wanted to do <laughs> would actually resonate with the community and that we understood enough of what library associations might be doing to ask good questions of everyone. And so we put out a solicitation to library association leaders. Um, we particularly um, asked for, um, we were looking for global representation. We were able to get um, mostly, if you will, the, the you know, Europe, US, Canada, um, not as much in the African and Asian countries. Um, this may have been language barriers um, in the barriers on our side, which is our research team was English speaking um, with a little bit of German <laughs> and a little bit of French, but um, primarily these case studies interviews were conducted in English. 
We also did website analyses of each library association to see what they were saying on their websites. We looked at a number of other library association websites as well, but they were not full case studies because in the case studies, we actually interviewed the executive leader or the volunteer leaders of the association. So what we found is that you cannot rely on library association websites to represent the breadth and depth of activity in this area. In every case, if we had only looked at the website, we would have been misled into thinking they were doing less than they are actually doing which might tell library associations they need to do a better job of communicating what they're doing, but it was also an important part of the research findings that we needed to do something that solicited input. We couldn't just look at what they were publishing out to the world, which might be one way one could undergo such a study of what library associations do is to look at their websites. We realized that looking at their websites would not be adequate for phase two of this project. Secondly, we saw that across even those case studies where people were sort of putting up their hand and saying, sure, talk to me, we do stuff in this area, that expertise and effort really varied. And in some associations, this work is member led, in some associations, it's staff led. And so we don't have, we can't say definitively, oh, you know, it's always this way, it's varied in this. We also found that library associations were by and large focused on copyright advocacy and library worker copyright literacy, but with no or minimal effort on copyright literacy education. So that came out of the case studies as, as already um, looking at that. But what we heard in the case studies is that people were very interested in copyright literacy education and they saw it as a future growth area of importance. So that helped us understand that this survey was indeed important to do because people were interested in this and everyone wanted a model. So we were hoping that maybe our study that went a little more global could tell us a little bit more about what was happening. So long story short, case studies, survey development, lots of question programming Qualtrics, and <laughs> we did a survey. <laughs> um, 38 library associations submitted responses and they came from 35 different countries. Our responses to the survey were globally representative, but we don't actually know how many library associations there are in the world. So we can't definitively say what proportion we have as responses here. Um, and we know there's associations at sort of national levels, regional levels, or in certain countries like the US, we have one in almost every state. Pleased to say that most of our responses were either at the national or regional level. And so we have broad coverage of the globe. Um, so we have sort of breadth of coverage, not necessarily depth in any particular country. Um, so these were the key questions that we were driving out with the survey itself. Are associations interested in this copyright literacy education thing? And what resources are they interested in? Are there barriers to preventing them from doing this work? You know, do they wanna do this work, but they can't get past the barriers? And do they see a view of what IFLA could do in this area? So with that set up, I'm gonna turn it over to Kaylin, who's going to, who did an amazing job on the analysis from this survey. And she is going to take us through some of those findings. All right. So since we understood that lots of libraries engage with copyright in many different ways, we set up these three different definitions at the outset of our survey, which is, Copyright advocacy, defining that as activities to support like a single particular copyright policy or project. And then copyright literacy, kind of moving with the staged approach of our copyright model, which is defined as activities to educate librarians and library workers about copyright. And then copyright education, which was activities to train librarians and library workers to teach library users about copyright. So a train the trainer model there. Could you get me the next slide, Lisa? So the first question on our survey was in general, how important is copyright as an issue to your association to you? And with all of our questions, we were kind of going with, um, this is very important, 
um, this is important or unimportant. And the results kind of reflected that IFLA statement of the necessity for copyright literate librarians, because nearly everybody here says that um, copyright is either very important or important to the association. And basically nobody says this is outside of the scope of our mission. Next slide, please. So going into that model of engagement with advocacy, copyright literacy, and train the trainer, um, the first question out of that model is, does your association engage in copyright advocacy? So assessing with that, it says, again, nearly all associations responded positively. 79% were currently doing some form of copyright advocacy. And almost all said, uh, all of those who were not currently doing it, said that they would like to do so in the future. And again, we're defining copyright advocacy as doing something um, particular to a copyright policy or project. And we were surprised that out of those, a whole 40% stated that copyright advocacy was their top, was one of their top priorities of their association. And so then moving through to copyright literacy, um, does your association educate members about copyright laws and policies? We, so we found a continuation of that same engagement. So most who were engaged in some kind of advocacy activity were also promoting copyright literacy among association members. So the priority associations placed on copyright literacy was slightly less than the priority placed on advocacy, but it was not such a decrease. And only a quarter though say that it was a top priority. However, that support for increased copyright activities held with nearly all stating that they would like to offer copyright education to association members in the future if they were not currently doing so. So our other question was, does your organization prepare librarians to answer copyright questions from users? So we were viewing this as distinct from educating members on copyright laws and policies, which would increase the copyright literacy among association members. So with this question, we're kind of seeking um, whether or not associations were training members to assist the users. And again, we see high engagement here with about uh, three quarters saying that they're training members to assist users with copyright questions. However, a lot of people are actually seeing this as outside of the scope, more so than our previous two with advocacy and training members. Um, few more associations stated that this is beyond what they seek to do, and yet there's still continued enthusiasm um, to the point where it is significant. 40% of people said that they hoped to do so in the future if they were not currently educating members in this way. The final activity that we surveyed here was the train the trainer programs for copyright. So documenting whether members are training library users to be copyright literate. So that's extending beyond uh, conducting consultations and teaching users to make copyright and fair use and fair dealing assessments for their own purposes. And so we asked, does your association prepare members to be copyright educators? And out of all the activities survey, this had the least engagement of all with only one third of associations reporting that they were doing train the trainer programs and even fewer identifying that this was a top priority. But what we saw with the previous answers was that associations which were not providing a service overwhelmingly hope to do so in the future. And with this final question, about 21%, which was more than with the others, stated that this was outside the scope of their mission. But the main thing here is that still 50% of respondents stated that they were interested in offering this in the future. So that indicates to us really is that many associations are aspiring to this most developed stage of the copyright education maturity model that we developed, even if they have not yet attained it. They're hoping for more and more. 
Um, next slide, please. So one important trend that we noticed from our studies was that associations ranked copyright education with high importance, but they were encountering a few barriers that impeded them from providing programming that they wanted for their members. So this is something that we investigated further. If they said, we want to do this, but then no, um, no, we are not currently doing this, but we would like to. Um, we kind of asked, uh, what are the barriers that you face? And we gave them a number of options. So for each of the three defined copyright activities, um, they were allowed to select from all of the options. And while crafting the survey, we kind of thought that the barriers would vary depending on geography, and thus the needs would vary depending on geography worldwide. However, there is no evidence in our data for a regionalized approach. The barriers and the needs are widespread. So the greatest barriers that we found kind of across the board were lack of funding and lack of copyright expertise. So for associations that were not able to provide copyright literacy education, those two were the greatest barriers, the lack of funding and the lack of copyright expertise. And notably, however, this is the lack of member interest is only a perceived barrier to that group that hasn't provided the copyright literacy education, but which were educating members on copyright in general but not yet providing further training. So lack of association staff is of course a consistent theme as you might expect and competing priorities are another significant barrier. But tracking with those responses of rating things of like, yes, we're doing this, but it's not a top priority. Yes, we're doing this, but it is a top priority. It is um, the competing priorities aspect is the greatest barrier among those who would like to do a train the trainer program, but are not currently doing it, rather than lack of funding and lack of expertise. And probably the biggest thing is just this ball of uncertainty related to copyright is um, the laws that are constantly being revised. So some associations are desiring to provide copyright training, but are impeded by that uncertain legal landscape in which copyright law is under significant revision. So this proved to be an issue for at least 16% of the respondents in the survey overall. And then another question is just merely organizational, is who is responsible for this? So although associations generally regarded copyright as important, there was some indication of confusion about whether or not associations should be responsible for this training. And so that proved to be a barrier for about 50% of those interested and uh, about a quarter for those interested in train the trainer training. But so kind of this discussion here overall though of interest in providing copyright training and those who are engaged in it may at least bridge that gap of who is responsible as we kind of open up this forum of what are we actually doing as a group. So one of the most important pieces of data that we collected has to do with IFLA's future copyright education programming. Um, yes, we are on the right slide. Thank you, Lisa. So associations rated various forms of programming as very helpful, helpful, or not helpful. And then they were asked to choose one of the services which would be most helpful to their association. So here's a list of their ranked choices that they voted on. And again, we kind of thought that this would be regionalized, but then it was not, that we did not find that in our data set. So the number one thing that they needed was website with resources for copyright basics and education, and then training for association members on how to develop and deliver their own copyright education training. So that's something that could be rather than specific to each on the national level, some sort of um, international generalized approach. How do you develop copyright training for your specific needs in the local area? Guidelines for copyright education curriculum and um, guidelines for responding to patron questions about copyright. 
um, kind of lower down in the rankings was the sort of discussion forum, training on how to respond to copyright questions from patrons, because that also, again, is fewer people are interested in the training for librarians to speak to users and not so much on the instruction on the basics of copyright. It seems that people are at least at that baseline level of copyright literacy, which probably makes sense since so many of them are engaged in copyright advocacy. Um, so I think that this serves as a good guidance in the beginning for IFLA about which resources would be the most valuable and what, where we would most like to grow, such as providing the training for questions, users' questions regarding copyright education and providing the train the trainer programs for members to train users to be copyright literate. Lisa? Great, thanks, Kaylin. It's lovely to hear somebody else explain this as opposed to I've been doing all the talk. So it, I picked up some good hints on how to explain some of this. Um, so these are just some of the kind of questions that came to mind for us. I mean, this is one of those things about how when you're the researcher, you don't necessarily like we're not in charge of IFLA, right? <laughs> so, you know, there's still this question here of, you know, where should IFLA, what should IFLA focus on in the development of its copyright education activities for library associations? Is there a best role for IFLA's copyright and legal matters committee? And then of course, how could other library associations use these findings? Um, because even though it is, you know, sort of had an audience of thinking about what IFLA could do, there's clearly also the ways that this, this survey itself where we asked about these different areas of activity could be used even as a discussion fodder within a meeting of an executive board of a library association <clears throat> to sort of review their own areas of activity and confirm that they are actually working in the ways that they wish to be or if they would like to take a strategic initiative to further develop the copyright literacy and copyright education programs that they currently offer. So like with much research, it's it's sort of now gifted out, if you will, to the community for a dialogue, discussion, and action. Um, we do have uh, the formal scholarly manuscript under review uh, with a journal and have received a relatively positive review of our manuscript. So we're working on that and hope to see that published soon. Um, but in the meantime, we'd like to invite folks here today to ask questions. Um, respond to the survey or um, any other comments that you might have. So we will, I'm going to just actually also put up my next slide, which just has my contact information as the primary contact for this survey. You're of course welcome to contact Kaylin and Jade as well, but I kind of have that responsibility of the, the singular point of contact and we're happy to hear from people afterwards as well. So let me pause and see if anyone has anything that they'd like to tie up into the chat or if you, um, yeah, if you have a question for us. So I think I'm going to take that as it was a really excellent explanation that people are also probably trying to process a large amount of data. So why don't we go ahead and close out the question and answer as well as close out the formal part of this program. And we'll stop the recording, uh, Camille, if you could do that. And uh, Kaylin and I will be happy to also just stay and talk more informally if people have questions or just kind of want to dialogue about this, but maybe don't want to be on a permanent recording. So thank you so much for spending your time with us today. It's been a joy to share with you our research and we hope that this provokes additional thoughts for people.